The APS Mile Lakes Rally is based out of the small Bulladeela Township on the banks of the Mile River. It's a round of the New South Wales Open Rally Series, New South Wales Development Rally Series, New South Wales Clubman Rally Series and also the New South Wales Hyundai Rally Series. From a two-wheel drive perspective, there was a number of escorts lined up with a potential to win. David Hills was contemplating being second car on the road and dealing with the damp and likely slippery conditions. Just got to watch the shaded areas, I think. Hope we want a bit of sun on there. The truck will be dry, but obviously watch the slippery corners and just be careful out there. More of a shakedown, really. Haven't done anything for a while, so considering we haven't done a rally for about 10 months, it's going to be interesting, but looking forward to it anyway. 100 caution, road goes right, then hum. There was just two stages before the first service, and in the two-wheel drive category, he was four. At the start of stage one, Ian Hill, in another escort, was also thinking about the damp conditions. I'll be happy if I can stay on the road, probably for most of the day, um, and hopefully somewhere at the pointy end of the field at the end. Really hard to beat a four-wheel drive in these conditions. I mean, it's just not possible. But um, yeah, no, it'll be it'll be interesting. Let's put it that way. Interesting indeed. He jumped straight to the two-wheel drive lead and was also winning the event outright after the leading four-wheel drive had a flat tyre. He came into the service after stage two with more than a minute gap back to PJ O'Keefe in yet another escort. PJ was on a charge. He set the third quickest time for a two-wheel drive in both the first stages. The first stage was, was good. Uh, we had a pretty good time. The second stage was very slippery. We did make a few mistakes and a few dodgy moments, but yeah, we got out of it all right. Hopefully this evening it'll be a bit drier, but I'll just take it a bit easier, maybe. <laughs> it's just where the trees are, they're very slippery, yeah. and you kind of got to be careful just not to take too many chances there on those ones, like, you know. Bruce Durham in the Toyota Celica was also showing some speed. He was seated car 16, but by the service was the third two-wheel drive. We caught his co-driver Stephen Bramble in the service park, sitting in the driver's seat. Yeah, going really good actually, um, really good. We're happy with everything's going, just playing a, a good game and giving it everything we've got, so having a heap of fun along the way. But why was he in the driver's seat? Uh, just a quick bleed of the brakes, just to push the bell a bit soft and touchy, so we'll just give him a quick bleed over, just keep it all nice and smooth. That's all we're doing, clean the windscreen and bleed the brakes. Robert Innall in the Holden Commodore was pushing. He was second quickest in the first stage, but in stage two, there were dramas. Oh, I mean, we're going, uh, we're going okay. The first stage was great. A few jumps in the second stage, which was also a fun stage, but we've come down a bit too nose heavy off uh, one of the multitude of jumps we uh, we took on and lost. Now the boys are there trying to fix the radiator. I think you'll be back for this afternoon. Yeah, look, we hope so. There's just um, there's one core in there that's um, that's damaged. They're going to uh, try and kink that, so it snapped the fan right off the uh, the front pulley. Um, there's no saving the fan, we'll put another belt on it, they're going to pull the radiator out, try and crimp it and we'll, maybe we'll get out there and get to the next stage definitely and we'll just have to uh, maybe do a bit of short shifting and see how we go. Andrew and Mick Chapman are in a much newer car than all the rest we've seen. They are in a modern Toyota 86 and we're setting consistent stage times. Their reward for consistency was sixth in two wheel drive by the time they got to the service. Tony Jordan and Richard Davidson in the Triumph Stag were seventh. Bob Moore was in eighth. John Sparks rounded out the top ten in his Nissan Silvia and he had only one cheeky goal at this event. My expectation is to finish, to keep it smooth, and um, I don't want to get beaten by an XL. So far that's not looking good for John, because the ninth two-wheel drive was Damien Frizzell in a Hyundai XL, showing that if you can drive well, it doesn't really matter what car you're in. Join us for part two of the APS Mile Lakes Rally two-wheel drive review, where we'll head into the final three stages that actually ends up becoming just two stages after some deep creek dramas would see only David Hills make it through before the stage would be downgraded. Stay alive, Hill. Good shit.
Welcome back to Bullet Dealer for part two of our review of the two-wheel drives from the APS Mile Lakes Rally. There were three stages after the service, but stage four was cancelled due to some deep water in a creek, so it's down to just two final stages. On board with Brett Bauer and Anthony Wilkinson in the Toyota Celica, the dramas in stage one would relegate them to the very bottom of the scorecard. They had some time to make up and threw caution to the wind. They're eighth fastest in SS3. And then really showed some speed in the final stage. They were the quickest two-wheel drive. It might have been fun, but it didn't improve their position. They finished last. Rob Innall drove the repaired Commodore into third quickest for SS3, but that's as far as they'd go, and he retired. So let's cover off the top 10 two-wheel drive placings for the rally. In 10th was Phil Boyd in the Datsun Stanza. Ninth place went to Jared Gotch and Brian Price in the immaculate looking Honda Civic front wheel drive. Eighth position would go to John Sparks in the Sylvia. Oh, just calming down a little bit. <laughs> that was a fast stage. A few humps. Very, very nice. Just wish the rally was a bit longer because I'm just pumped. It was a bit rusty, particularly on the first stage. Had a bit of a moment on cool enough for the second last stage, but um, that stage I think I was going a bit harder than previously and I think I'm back into it. So you're not expecting any Hyundais to beat you? I'll just wait and look at the results. <laughs> it might have seemed fast to me, but it might not have been. But he did get beaten, and he got beaten by an Excel. Damien Frizzell faster by just three seconds to finish seventh. Feels fast for me in here, believe me. I'm pushing hard. That was good, that was a cracking stage that one. Roads are dried out, nice and fast. Fantastic event, shame we had to miss the stage. Apart from that, great event. I'll be back. Yeah. In sixth was Bob Moore in the stanza, who hasn't finished an event since last year. He was happy just to make it to the finish of a rally. This is great, being at the end of a rally. It's terrific. We finished and the last stage was just the best. It was brilliant. Now your front uh, right hand wheel has got a lot of camber on it, is that how it's set up or have you got a little bit of an issue there? Well we've got variable camber, sometimes we have it on the left, sometimes we have it on the right. No, it's been a brilliant day today, it's a pity we lost that stage back there, the creek was pretty deep so the modern cars would have had a lot of trouble going through it, but having a lovely prestige heritage car like this, um, we wouldn't have had much trouble going through it. One of the most interesting cars in the field would have to be the Triumph Stag but it almost didn't make the final stage. Oh, we had a drama at the start of the stage. We lost oil pressure, so we um, sticking relief valve, but fixed that up and uh, started off, and I thought it was just going to limp through, and it came good, so I gave it a bit. So, no, it was all good fun. The Stag finished fifth two-wheel drive. The husband and wife team of Andrew and Nicole Chapman were another team relishing in the conditions and pushing their Toyota 86 up the leaderboard. They were fifth in stage three and stage five, which would see them jump up into fourth overall for two-wheel drive, despite a few issues inside the cabin. We've been struggling with the terror trip, not working more rally, but gee, we've been having some fun. Some uh, really uh, beautiful uh, scenery in there and uh, lots of nice kids. David Hills would do more competitive kilometres than anyone else at this rally. He was the only one to do stage four at speed. Consistent driving all day would see him finish third two-wheel drive. Bruce Durham was seated car 16 and was driving well above his start position, including some flamboyant cornering that would be rewarded with second overall in the two-wheel drive category. Yeah, it went pretty well. No major dramas, one slight uh, off on a left hand uh, over a crest, but yeah, apart from that, everything went pretty well. Car's going good. Shame about stage four, but it is what it is. A lot of fast stuff in there. Excellent. Ian Hill said it would be impossible to beat a four-wheel drive in these conditions, yet that's exactly what he did. Not only winning two-wheel drive, but winning the event outright. Really good result at the end of the day. It's um, 
been a really special day of rallying. Its uh, roads have been superb. Really good uh, combination of roads to use. Um, just a, a really good event.